Life is even tougher than normal at the moment for people who are grieving the loss of a loved one. It's not always possible to say a proper goodbye or organise the funeral service that you'd really like for people to pay their respects. Now, St Luke's Hospice in Plymouth is opening up its bereavement support services to more families. Jusa Woodlake is the head of social care at the hospice and joins us now. Good morning. Good morning. Hi. So what's changing about the help and the care that you provide to bereaved families? Well, we're widening our reach. We're extending what we usually do. What usually happens is we get referrals. People get referred to us by their GP or other healthcare professionals, and then we support them and their families. What we're saying now is if you are affected by COVID-19 in any way, just ring us. You know, it doesn't matter whether we know you already You don't need to go to your GP, you don't need a referral, and you don't need to fill in a form. You can just ring us. Um, We're using our usual um, existing infrastructure, so we're we're where we always are, at our office in in Brooklyn, um, in Crown Hill, and you can ring 964-200, Plymouth number. And we want to particularly hear from people who are caring for someone um, or who are unable to care for someone who's uh, got COVID-19 because they might be in hospital or in a care home and they may, not, they, they may not be able to be visited. And we want to hear from you if you have been bereaved in this way. I mean, these are extra pressures, aren't they? Not being able yeah. to say goodbye to somebody, yes. not being able to, to hold a funeral service. There's a whole range of new issues um, introduced through COVID really to us that makes a bereavement which is really hard to deal with at the best of times, even harder. So people can't be with their loved ones um, or they have to decide which family member can visit and who may need to stay home because often one person might be allowed in. I mean, the same goes for funerals. There's a limited number now of people who can attend. So families have to have really tough conversations. And also what we find is that some families very, very sadly lose more than one family member to the virus and 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 sometimes this happens in 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 a matter of days so it is very tough tell us why it's important to to be able to have that opportunity to say goodbye to somebody well i you know people um really need to have you know a feeling that they were there that they did the best they could do that their loved one has been cared for in the way they wanted to have been cared for and to make sure of that, especially if they are unable to maybe communicate themselves anymore. They need people to speak for them and, and, and you know, advocate for them. And healthcare professionals will be so much better in, in a better place to deal with someone if they have family there who can, who can tell them who the, who the person is and what mm. is important to them. Do you know, when I talk to people like you and and the Mm. the job that you have, and I'm always so, I don't know, overwhelmed, I suppose it's the wrong word, but you've got such an important job and these intensive care nurses and anybody who has this job, it's important to look after them as well, isn't it, and offer support to them because they're so busy supporting the rest of us. Do they get support too? Yes, yes, um, I hope we all do. We certainly do at St. Luke's, but we also, we think it's really important to support the staff. And as part of our COVID-19 response that we've launched on the 4th of May, we are saying to health and social care professionals um, who clearly are also affected, we're we're human, we're as affected as, as everybody else is by this. You know, we're saying to them, you can ring us too. And we're particularly keen to reach out to teams to get teams together, say, for example, a team that works in a care home or a team that works on a particular ward at the hospital and reflect collectively on not so much um, on what can we do better or what's gone wrong or what's gone really well and therefore can we repeat it. This is more about how does this work make us feel and how can we get in touch with these emotions and to give that facilitated space to, to do that and it's uh, we, we it's not new we have done this for years and we have run these sessions amongst ourselves internally as well as with external agencies and there is a, a method behind it and it is facilitated which is really important and it can have a great leveling effect you know if we all realize we're, we're in the same 
both. We're all feeling it. Mm. and really make us feel that because we tend to avoid it I think or sometimes we just have to get on and carry on and keep going but it's really important to get in touch with the emotion because that is our way of keeping our compassion really I suppose we can all learn something from that can't we because mm. uh, for you know if, if we know somebody who is going through this at the moment and has suffered a bereavement a lot of us sometimes I'm speaking for everybody but probably me we're mm. frightened about saying the wrong thing you know s- seeming too sensitive or not sensitive enough what what advice can you give us well, there's a really interesting statistic that's just come out as part of um, Dying Matters Week, and Hospice UK have released this figure that says that 72% of those bereaved in the last five years, they would rather that friends and colleagues would say something, even if it might be not right, you know, exactly, but they would rather people say something than nothing at all. That's, that's what's really hard for people when nobody is talking about it. I think that's a that's a lesson for us all today and something that yeah. we should listen to. Jita, thank you. And to the whole team there at St Luke's Hospice in Plymouth. You're all doing You're a welcome. wonderful job. Okay. Thank you, Jisa Widlake, the Head of Social Care at the Hospice.